off the fucking rail. Because if you don't undo this on the person, you're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. And I, people like me, people have wasted a significant amount of time just with me. And energy. Here, energy. Chilling. And He's not using much. No. I am I, pulling him with everything I've up. got to do almost nothing to him. Even so, behind, like this isn't working. It that doesn't sunglass make it so cool. Work. <laughs> <laughs> he's got <laughs> Even Sean. Oh. This has actually happened to him, by the it's, way. No, I'm serious, Sean. This yeah. is like where he's coming. I feel it. He's strong. <laughs> it's happened it's to legit. him. It's happened to me. We're not going anywhere. He's not easy to take down at that point. No, he's legit. So, he's legit. So, I'll have a rail. Like the first thing like, is, child. if they're not locked <laughs> in, oh, is uh, Clay, is there? the two-person rail throw. All right. Oh, shit. So, Clay will come from behind me. I'm going to lock Kirk in right here. Mm -hmm. So he's not going anywhere. Clay, you're going to push yep. on Kirk's left side face against the rail. Oh. God, so now the stretch here, sucks. Pull up your legs on the inside. That's why we stretch your shoulders yeah. And right. then... Push Kirk forward. Eventually. Good night. <laughs> You're on the ground. Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> That's the best way to get someone off Peel his off. death grip. Is literally just two people Peel. lever their ass off. Cause better hit him in the crotch with a halberd. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hit him in the crotch with a halberd. You have to get French. This is being recorded. Stop. Bon oui. Bon oui. We can edit that um, out. Sorry. Uh, Reaping the legs is another good way to get someone off. If they've got a tight grip on the rail, is again, this is getting a person off the rail usually requires two people. Um, so if uh, Don, come here. So, what I want Don to do is I want you to plant your right foot on the inside of Kirk's left foot. Left foot. Closer, heel to heel. There you go. I want you to pretty much do a burlesque kick out to your left. He's good at this. All right. And as Kirk, he does yeah, that, yeah. he's dragging yeah, Kirk's right. foot out this way. I'm going to try and grab Kirk, and I'm going to try and peel him off with like a twist. I need to hit my hand under his arm. Sorry, I'm my arm ah. yep. Go under on the inside. Sorry. <laughs> You're twisting Here. my. Oh. Yep, that's off. <laughs> Is the <laughs> you won't be able to twist angle. But the <laughs> the reap pulls him out this way and opens this up and that's when you shoot well, you that gap with right. either your shield and you lift to stand up because that's going to stretch my arm if you can't see over here okay yep, yep. um so if i have it so i'm going to do, do this, way. this when you take my you weapon know. hand if i have like a mace or a shield or whatever i'm going to shoot behind I'm going to get my shoulder under his armpit, okay. and then I'm going to stand up. There's not a lot I can do to hold on there. And then all I need to do is take my left or my right foot and step out this way and just roll him down. Okay. The main thing is getting this off. If you don't, our best thing to do is just hammer the shit out of it. The other spot. So like, if we're sitting here. Um, I'll be, um, 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 feeling you. Is like, we're sitting here fighting, and my goal is to make it look like I'm not holding the rail at all. Mm -hmm. So he will want to try to get my head to go for that throw. As soon as I feel this switch, it's a rotation in a reef. Because when you notice he has let go, that's when you take the shot. Because if he's still holding on, I can switch yeah. and do this all day, and he's not going anywhere. Yeah, right. but I can't throw him from here unless he's on this side, and I can throw him on my hip. So if this I'm is pretty front, safe, because he's going to have to transition. I to have to, to do some crazy stuff to throw anyone from this position. Keeping myself locked in the rail. I can throw some if I get my hand off the rail. So you bait them into thinking they're going to get the throw, and then you transition back out into something else. So do that again? Yeah, yeah so, so when he starts to come up, I launch back this way and start the reap. Because then I can start start deep, his hands are now off the rail, and the more I can pull his whole body out and away from the rail, the less likely he is to get his arms back on it. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. 
if you notice, still, everything revolves around getting their arm off the rail. Whether you trick them into doing it for you, or whether you have a friend to help you pull it off, right. mm -hmm. get their arm off the rail. And that can absolutely include, if he's sitting here, <laughs> and these two are kind of fighting, right? If I come in here and I've got a good shot at taking these hits oh, while he God. is sitting here up against really the rail, like, your know. armor doesn't have anywhere to go. So you are pressure it's, on the bone there. Penetrating. And I call it stapling them. It is effective. They will move mm -hmm. their arm eventually. Mm -hmm. Hit him in the armpit. The, uh, technically not legal. What? Uh, what? 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 Well, it's, no, it's actually not. Okay. It's in the BOTN rules. Well, okay. We're not legal. well We're so not is legal. pricking. <laughs> But we'll ask later. You want to be striking <clears throat> in a spot that is taking advantage of the fact that they have their arm firmly against the rail, because this gives less. Like if I hit your hand out here, it moves with the hit, mm -hmm. and it's not that bad. The armor disperses literally everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I hit his arm here, especially if I can get an axe, like if you were to take him and peel him this way, switch your body to the other side. Now I've got a good strong blow oh, here, and yeah. he is. Don't hold his wrist. You're, You're holding him. him on the rail. Yeah. Well, you can, you can't He's not going to want to sit here and take too many ass shots like that. He's going to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And and one thing to note is always um, do the courtesy tap. Yeah. Um, if your formsman is literally the courtesy tap is literally you. Chop if a list. person's no, you just tap their arm and let them know it's like I'm I about to you. do this. Next and if a person's yes. smart <laughs> and you know like they'll go ahead and let go. Yeah. If I see that. And it's depending on who it is, because like I know he, I'm not going where if say let's say who would be good on that. If Kai Kang comes up to me, <laughs> full axe, and he does a courtesy tap, I'm going to do this <laughs> no, <seriously. laughs> because, because the next one's gonna suck. It's because funny, I might go to the hospital with yeah, stitches from the next one. His own teammate yeah. through well, their armor. If it makes you think about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. He, he's a uh, <laughs> so. He's that is, hitter. that is, that is the, hit. uh, if they uh, don't move, ahead, hit them. Sean, yeah. go ahead. All right, so in this type of situation, we want to do a two-on-one on one on, the, on the list itself. Is because the other people are sitting on the rail and not free? Either they're free or you've got a spot where one of your guys is fighting two of them and you think you can get this guy quickly. Mm -hmm. Ideally, okay. though, this, I'm only going to spend a couple seconds here. Yeah, if, right. if nothing's working, I'm moving on because my teammate somewhere is suffering. Or yeah. this is once you've put somebody down and you have numbers advantage. Now I can take my time and we can get him down. Yeah. We've all done so, it. We get tunnel vision when we're fighting. Try to like, that's what I'm saying, count out loud to yourself because it will remind you. And if you are going to swing at somebody with an axe and they're at the rail, that means your back is not to the rail. Right. Yeah. So every time you swing, bam, check. check. Every single swing. Yeah, so the biggest usefulness for being like a rail fighter is like a especially the smaller people. A lot of people look at you and go, oh, you're an easy down. So they might send one of their better fighters to come get you. And that's actually one of my favorite strategies is they'll send a power fighter after me. <laughs> and then I just keep them on the rail for the entirety of the fight. And I Because now it's a pride thing. They're the good fighter and you didn't look all that good and they have to get you or they've lost points, yeah. man. And now I'm just sitting here while their VIP fighters sitting there wailing <laughs> on me. And I, I don't give two shits. So I'm staying here. And it's like, are my Polax guy, like Jeff uh, Suter, is going to come and annihilate him? Or I'm just going to keep him here until... The rest of their team is gone. Yeah. Just pull a VIP fighter out. Just that simple. Like, you know. That is the one time it's okay if, like, we know this is their top fighter and you're <laughs> at the actual rail and they're sitting there fighting you. That is the one time I don't want you looking for the out. Yeah. If you feel safe, stay there and keep their top fighter occupied. Yeah. And because your team will take advantage of that. Right. And right. it is, you know, go, go look back to the videos of the turns I've been in. Like, I often Detroit. tie up two people on the rails. Tell them about time. Detroit. I mean. We already did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kirk and I downed, like, we were outnumbered three to two, and we got all three of them down in and space of, like, versus 30 seconds. the Nashville team, team Carnage. That was a three, two of six. Mm -hmm. situation also we got pushed all the way to the very corner so now only two of them can fight at a time we were leaning against the rails resting while they're trying to shove and get exhausted get exhausted and then eventually when I realized he was really tired it's just boom there goes one and then Josh got one and then the two of us teamed up on the last guy we had more energy than them because they were gassing themselves out trying to put us down yeah. while we back into a safe spot 
and leaned into it. Yeah. Right. And just let them push. It, it's a strategic thing is, you know, I'll, I'll camp on the rail and because like one, instead of standing in the middle of the field looking for an opportunity, <laughs> you sit here, you know, someone can try and check you, but most of the angles that you can effectively be checked from, like only one, if a person comes straight up the rail behind you. Right. Ever else is I'm just getting shoved into the rail, I don't give two shits. So and I'm if someone's here, coming from behind you while you're sitting here with somebody else, are you just getting pushed into them? Yeah. You're still fine. But I'm looking for an opportunity the entire time. I'm looking, I'm looking, oh hey, there's that guy in the middle of the field with his back to me looking for a target. Off the rail I go and I just go boop and then back to the rail I go and okay, where's the next guy? And I look for that again. Or I might say, okay, I see those two people ganging up on my guy on the rail, so I'll go take one of those guys out yep. and just tie him up on the rail because like, oh hey, like someone's holding clay on the rail because I can't do anything. Better me on the rail than clay. I'm a better rail fighter. So I'll go get the guys tied up. Clay can go out and wreck face. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Yep. Um, Same things. here. Like if I'm sitting here tied up, I'm a center fighter. I can. Yeah. yeah. We both are. Like if I'm tied up here, I am not optimal. Yeah. I might be keeping a good fighter out, but if any one of y'all who is good at fighting rail comes, like we're sitting here, like. Get up here. Let's say I really want to free up Dong. Mm -hmm. They're fighting. They're holding on. I'm going to come in like this and I'm going to squeeze in here and Dong's free. Yep. And now I'm on the rail. But that's fine if he's the better fighter or if he's got the axe. Yeah. Right? If I'm a sword and shield and he's got an axe, I am not going to leave him tied up. Yeah. That is a waste of resources. He's your DPS. Yeah. He's, he's the guy who right. makes people yeah. sit down. So you want to keep him up. What are a rail throw actually? Um, so if it's a one versus one, and you know, you don't know when help is coming, the best thing is, is this is not going to work if they're death gripping the rail. You need to shoot in before they're in this position. So if Kirk is as he is right now, he's just walking up the rail like this. I'm just patient. I'm moving in. I'm, you need I'm ready. to. I feel safe. Step in. You need to step. Shoot that. He's gap. under my shoulder. He can't grab the rail like that now, and then it becomes a case of, it's like what Kirk showed the first time, is again, you shoot it, and you twist. And you can grab the rail. That's perfectly legal. You must at but, this point, if you're, I mean, not must, but, like, let's, let's, let's come in again, right? If I realize I can't hold the rail, I'm going to hold him. So mm -hmm. as he's trying to throw... He's right. If he's not a... using the rail, I'm we both play. might come down. Yeah. He's got good so, you can so when he he shoots in <coughs> and he grabs and throws. Yeah. And you see the Ukrainians do this a lot with people who are not paying attention. They get overly eager. The Ukrainians will sit, around, sit here. Because you feel safe. I can grab the rail at any yeah. time, right? Yep. They'll come walking up. But and the Ukrainian is sitting here casually like this, literally just chilling out. And he's like, yeah, so I'm going to come, come and I'm going to take you. Oh, there he goes. Just that fast. So, Clay, do you have any rail throws? Um, one of the things I was going to teach for somebody who's Come either a taller fighter, it's a modification of what Josh was showing, <laughs> but it works for me too, is what you'll actually see from higher end guys too. And so we linked up right here. I shoot in, I'm grabbing here. If I can't reach, which happens sometimes, mm -hmm. I'll try to start hooking this leg right here and just wrenching and actually lift it. Like, so I'm good holding on to this right here. I'll hook the leg, lift the leg up. And it, again, this requires leg strength, but hooking it here and just lifting, lifting, lifting off the ground. Now, That's one of the ones that I use personally, just cause I am taller. But if you can't get your leg all the so way across. Here's, here's, here's Here's the other part too, so let's, let's you go on okay. me. If you're now wanting to be safe and someone is starting to pull this on you. So if he gets in, you know you're in trouble here, right? So I'm going to lift this leg as best I can and I'm shooting across right. to here. You want to cross, step over his rail. And if he comes too far, you can even turn this up around because if he's letting go trying to get a hold, you you're going to start you're reaping his reverse. leg well, one yeah. thing and you keep you the throw going around. Yeah, if I'm right here, first, get where you were. All you gotta do is sweep this leg out right here because I'm yeah. stepping right here. He's already up. Yep. So it transitions a lot. Just be mindful of where your leg placement is. Because like I said, right here, if you're trying to get in, you can't muscle him. 
Use that leg, torque the body. This, and you, anybody who's fought in a melee knows, this is a shitty position to be in. Yeah, uh, you're good, right? You're peacocking, yeah. I know. But like, having someone here, if I'm on a list field and I'm not doing anything, I'm gonna try to keep someone here. Why? This is why my helmet has the slits. Why do, why do y'all think I wanna be here? <laughs> they do Where's your neck out? Fatigues them. Oh. I, I now see you where can't everything's see. at. He's yeah. safe. He, does he can't see. I don't have to do anything. I can be like. And gosh. he's waiting for someone to come and take advantage of this. Yep. Yeah. And that sweet, sweet baby. <laughs> 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 that big old dude. <laughs> Somebody like you, that's how anytime you lock up with someone, you need to be having them in that position because yeah. honestly, what, what happens to you is, so just got the round, I'm going to show you, like, what can happen is you, when you have someone your size or stronger, you can start going okay. and then hopping and then hopping oh. and then he's out. Oh, that sucks. It sucks. It super sucks. They taught us peacocking that one time. I call it peacocking, but it's basically like when you get put in that position, so here, broad chest. Yeah, walk your hips in. Walk your hips in, because now he's actually at a better advantage what, than what, I am. What, 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 what does it mean by walk your hips in? So, here. so he gets me here, right? Uh -huh. I don't want my hips out here. Uh -huh. I want to be in here. Be under so I'm taking those yeah. steps and walking my chest into his. And now I'm you usually on my toes. You can't, you can't sit, sit his if, hips if are lower I than mine. If I have gotten this tight, right, and I've lifted, I'm lifting him. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can turn these uh -huh. into throats. Yeah, I mean, really, just not even a like, good technique, but yeah. Think, think about where your feet are. Always think about placement. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I get you down, mm -hmm. walk it in. Hey, right. there you go. Now Bring stand. your hips oh. towards this. Oh. There you go. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, y'all want to want to get some practice in, figure it out, see what it feels like instead of just watching it. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's pair up.